Welcome back. Well, we all remember childhood stories about dragons and elves and other mythological characters. Well, one fiber artist in Williamson, New York, has brought those characters to life in felt. And her sculptures are an absolute feast for the senses. When you view the dolls of fiber artist Deborah Pope, you'll embark on a journey to faraway places, a journey through fantasy and reality. When I create my art, I, I feel as if I'm in another realm. I'm very involved in the piece, and the piece is telling me what it wants to be, and I have to stay open to what it wants to be. That takes a lot of quiet and uh, a peaceful, a serene environment in order for me to create something and have some uh, a good feeling about it. The end result may carry us away, but her inspiration is deeply rooted. I find so many of my faces look uh, a lot like uh, my father, my grandfather, um, grandmother. It's very interesting how faces uh, stay in our minds. Not only faces, but experiences. Creativity at an early age laid the foundation for Deborah's path as an artist. I don't know that my parents remember it, but I remember it well, is melting crayons on the register and enjoying the fact that they were melting, watching those lovely colors melt into one another, and then taking them with my fingertips and painting the wall. And it was behind a chair, and I don't believe it was discovered until the next spring. What Deborah discovered some years later was a more evolved art form, the art of sculptural felt making. Whether a magical dragon, a proud fisherman, or an enchanting elf, each of her playful pieces is first free-formed onto a wire armature. What I use for the body is vinyl clad copper, solid copper, or uh, galvanized steel. Once the basic body skeleton is formed, I take some floral tape and cover it with floral tape. What the floral tape does is it helps to allow the, the polyfill that I wrap around it to stay in one place. Otherwise, it would be moving around and would make it very difficult to work with. Once the wire skeleton is formed, I take strips of polyfill batting and wrap it around slowly, adding areas that, that need to be defined. I use a felting needle, which is a very sharp pointed instrument, to attach the polyfill batting. And through doing this, um, I can begin to create a structure. It was at a felting class that she became hooked on the felting needle. I thought the felting needle could be used perhaps to form the features as opposed to only attaching hair. Why not try it? That detail is most visible as Deborah defines the elf's head and face. I usually start with the eye area and then pulling out the nose and then creating the nostrils and uh, the mouth and so forth, pulling the chin out and the cheeks. Chalk, felt tip pens, and more wool are used to bring color to the face and sparkle to the eye. Then old school doll making techniques lend a helping hand when it comes to forming the elf's upper extremities. I've developed a way of doing the hands by working in a very traditional cloth doll making manner in which the hand is sewn. And then it, it's sewn on a very fine felt that I make and then I uh, turn it inside out and I have a wire armature that I've built previous to that that I attach to the arm of the elf and then this glove is slipped on and that becomes the hand and then it is, it is stuffed somewhat, a little bit, and then posed. After an outer layer of wool cloaks the body, Deborah's little friend gets a nice warm bath and a massage. I wet felt it. And I do that in the traditional felt making technique of taking the piece and plunging it into hot soapy water. And then I massage it very, very gently. I've discovered that by placing the bodies into a plastic bag, it will contain the heat, which helps to hasten the felt making process. With special attention to color and fabric choice, Deborah's sewing skills come in handy for the costuming. And then, as she connects mind and body, Deborah forms some thoughts of her own. 
most gratifying thing in doing these figures I get a chance to work with all of the things that I love. It's very uh, comforting and nurturing. Then to be able to work with all the wonderful colors and textures. There's so many different components that bring it together for me. It, it really makes it a pleasure to work this way. Not only for the creator, but undoubtedly for the beholder as well. I would hope that people go away with a, a sense of delight, that it makes them happy, maybe smile a little bit and reflect, perhaps even think of their own childhoods, uh, fairy tales and, and those wonderful, magical times of our childhood. Oh, my word. You know, I saw her do this and heard her explain how she does it, and I still don't get it. Oh, my word, isn't that incredible work?